In this video, we'll do another example of numerical integration using the composite trapezoid rule and the trapezoid rule for unequally spaced data. The composite trapezoid rule and the trapezoid rule for unequally spaced data are essentially the same thing, it's just that the composite trapezoid rule is primarily aimed at equally spaced data. The trapezoid rule for unequally spaced data actually reduces to the composite trapezoid rule if the data were to become equally spaced, so the only difference between the two is really just the name. The underlying algorithm is exactly the same. Anyways, suppose we ran an experiment involving an autonomous vehicle on the roads. We collected the velocity versus time data, then re-ran the experiment. Unfortunately, the velocity versus time data in the second trial turned out to be corrupted due to a glitch in the onboard sensor. We want to compute the total distance traveled in each trial, which is just the integral of the velocity data, then generate what's called the space-time diagram. The space-time diagram is just the fancy name used by civil engineers, which is actually just the position versus time diagram. I don't know why they call it the space-time diagram instead of just the position-time diagram, but whatever. To do so, we'll make use of the TRAP-Z and the QMTRAP-Z built-in MATLAB functions. Let's get started in MATLAB. Here we are in MATLAB. This is a pretty simple script, there's really not much to it. The first section loads and plots the data from the MAT file. The second part of the script calls the TRAP-Z and the QMTRAP-Z functions. We'll come back to this part later, but the bulk of the code is really just plotting a bunch of stuff. The emphasis of this example is not the trapezoidal rule itself, but what we can take away from it. The lower subplot of figure 1 contains the velocity time data for each trial. As expected, the trial 1 data looks pretty clean, but the trial 2 data is scattered. We can see that there aren't as many data points in trial 2 as there are in trial 1. When we see that one dataset has fewer points than another, we should immediately think of the accuracy of the trapezoidal rule. We know that generally, more data leads to more accuracy, so we should expect the numbers we get from both trials to have some differences. The other thing we should immediately notice is that the trial 1 data is evenly spaced, but the trial 2 data is unevenly spaced. Whereas the trial 1 velocities are measured at a regular interval, the trial 2 velocities are sporadically sampled. We can see this in figure 2, which is just a plot of the trial 2 data. I shaded in the trapezoid so you can visually see how each segment has a different length. These colors change randomly every time you run the code, which is just a fun little bit I threw in. Hopefully this helps you visualize what the trapezoid rule represents. Unevenly spaced data can affect the accuracy of the integration because the differing segment lengths may not capture precise changes in the data. This isn't always true, but it's something to consider. We can actually see an example of how unequally spaced data might be problematic. In trial 1, the velocity smoothly decreases from 22 to 13 meters per second, but instantaneously drops in trial 2. When we integrate, trial 2 will overestimate with respect to trial 1 because the integral will account for the extra area between these two curves. This is a direct consequence of trial 2 not having enough data points to smooth out the sharp velocity drop to match what trial 1 has. The same thing occurs here when the velocity goes back up to 22 meters per second. Let's zoom in on the plot to get a better look. The trial 1 data is pretty smooth, but the trial 2 data jumps up just like before. When we integrate, the trial 2 data will once again overestimate with respect to trial 1 because of the gap here between the data sets. When the velocity starts to stabilize around t equals 90 seconds, the opposite actually happens. Now we can see that the trial 1 curve extends above the trial 2 curve, so this time, the trial 2 integral will underestimate the area with respect to trial 1. The integrals from t equals 96 seconds-ish onwards until the end will be identical despite the uneven spacing because the velocity is just a constant 22 meters per second. Now let's go back to the script. In the second part of the script, I call it the trap-z function for each dataset. This gives us the total distance traveled. You use the trap-z function the exact same way for unevenly spaced data as you would for equally spaced data. The first argument specifies the spacing between the data points, and the second argument is the data you want to integrate. You can actually omit the first argument entirely if and only if the spacing between data points equals 1. Even if I had a dataset with a uniform spacing of 1, I would still include the first argument. 
It just feels more proper to give trap Z two arguments all the time, but that's just my personal preference. Anyways, we can see that D2, which is the total distance traveled in the second trial, is greater than D, which is the total distance traveled in the first trial. This is because of the overestimates stemming from the velocity changes here and here. Although trial 2 underestimated with respect to trial 1 when the velocity started stabilizing somewhere around here, we overestimated here and here more, so the net result is an overestimate with respect to trial 1. The next part of the script calls the cumtrap z functions. Whereas trap z only returns the scalar value of the integral, cumtrap z accumulates the value of the integral for each data point and stores the cumulative result in a vector which has the same length as the data. This allows us to see how the integral is being calculated in each step. For example, the cumtrap z function will start at zero because we haven't yet integrated anything. The second element of the cumtrap z output will be the area of this trapezoid, the third element will be the area of this trapezoid added to the area of the first trapezoid, and so forth. There are 24 trapezoids, so the x2 vector will have 25 elements because the first element of x2 is 0. Note that we also have 25 elements in the t2 and v2 vectors, which is not a coincidence. Anyways, x and x2 represent the cumulative distances traveled over time, which enables us to generate the space-time diagrams in the upper subplot of figure 1 here. Let's take a closer look at the space-time diagram. At the start, both curves more or less overlap. We know this is true because the velocity in this region, from about 0 to 20 seconds, is constant. Therefore, the areas under each curve should be very similar, even though the trial 2 data is unequally spaced. Eventually, the trial 2 data ends up overtaking the trial 1 data just around here. This occurs around t equals 32 seconds, which corresponds to the time when the trial 2 data starts overestimating the trial 1 data in the sudden velocity drop around here. When the velocity goes back up to 22 meters per second around t equals 80 seconds, we previously noticed that the trial 2 data overestimates once again. This causes the gap between the curves to widen, which we notice here. The gap lessens slightly just around here because this is when the trial 2 data starts underestimating with respect to trial 1 when the velocity starts leveling out. However, the trial 2 data still overestimates overall compared to trial 1. This concludes the space times diagram example. This was more of a conceptual lesson than a coding demo. Whenever you have different data sets, it's important to compare them thoroughly because that may affect any future calculations you do. We saw how the spacing of the dataset can over or underestimate with respect to another dataset. But no matter how the data is spaced, you can still use the trap z and the cumtrap z functions as normal. That's the real beauty of these built-in MATLAB functions. See you next time.